Greetings in the name of the Triune God, the God who is always with us. I am Debbie Bartley and so honored to serve as one of First St. Charles Associate Pastors. And we gather again with my friends around our picnic table. So last session, I invited you to journey with me through Bishop Karen Olivedo's book, Together at the Table. Bishop Olivedo is the first openly lesbian bishop in our United Methodist Church. And at the end of the devotional, I also left you with a couple of questions to ponder. One being, can we listen to lives that are different from ours? So, were you in the presence of someone different from you? And if so, how did you feel? Another question, can we open ourselves to God's voice? Were you able to spend some time with God? Did you experience any nudges from God? And then finally, can we open ourselves to loving those who are different from us? This is a process and part of our journey together. So we continue our journey, specifically a journey of embracing everyone, everyone as a precious child of God. And we continue our journey as we go through Pride Month together. And this week, specifically, we will also journey together through Juneteenth on Saturday. For some of you, the two events are a part of your story or of someone you know. Bishop Olivedo believes, and so do I, that empathy is crucial in our relationships. And she defines empathy as the ability to enter in to the joys, pains, and experiences of another. It creates community, and when we offer empathy, we, love, we have a chance of connecting with those who are different from us. So prior to becoming a pastor, I practiced law. And I was employed by a national prepaid legal service plan to, for members of the United Auto Workers. It was just like a normal law office, only our clients were limited to UAW members. Now, one of the benefits offered to retirees and disabled workers was the ability to request a house call. Now, my primary office was located in Northwest Plaza, which is just across the Missouri River from St. Charles close to Lambert International Airport. Those of you familiar with the St. Louis metropolitan area probably know of Northwest Plaza. It's gone through some transitions just as the neighborhoods around it have. Now given the location of my office, I made many house calls to North St. Louis County and North St. Louis City. These areas have experienced what is called white flight. These are the streets and neighborhoods with which I became quite familiar as I visited clients in their homes. And what it, let me share one or a couple of examples. If you drive from St. Charles to St. Louis City on Interstate 70, you'll notice that there are homes along the interstate whose yards back up literally to the interstate abutting the easement. I met people living in those homes, and street names covered in the overnight news stories were the very streets upon which I drove. And the area where Michael Brown lived and died is close to Northwest Plaza. Now on these house calls, I quickly discovered that I lived in a very sheltered small space of the area. I visited homes that were about to fall apart, homes with broken windows, homes with many deadbolts on their doors. There were middle-class homes, there were wealthy homes. There were homes built over a century ago, rich with history. They were people's homes where they slept, ate, and entertained. Now, every client greeted me warmly and extended hospitality to me, or shall I say maybe, as warmly and as hospitable as one might want to be 
toward an attorney while being just a tad suspicious and skeptical. Were they offering me empathy and the benefit of the doubt? Yes, indeed, they were. Now, one of my most memorable and touching house calls of my career was the home of an 80 plus year old woman of color in St. Louis City. There were bars on every one of her windows and her door. Our visit was great. And as I left to walk to the street and get in my car, I'll always remember her words to me. I'm going to stand right here and make sure you get into your car safely. I did, and I drove away with so many mixed emotions. I was going to sleep that night in my safe suburban home, and she was going to sleep listening to the sounds and sirens of a night lived in the city. Now, when I got back to our office after that visit, I'll also never forget the words of one of our support staff, a woman of color. Debbie, if I had known you were going and headed to that address, I'd never have let you go there by yourself. Those experiences helped me grow in empathy toward people whose life experiences and lived truths were so different from mine. Now, Bishop Olivedo believes that race relations provide the best example of our lack of empathy for those different from us. If we who are white and privileged, she says, cannot see beyond our privileged world, if we cannot try to imagine, try to imagine what the world is to a person of color, then what we'll all we'll see is our white world. So on this Saturday, Juneteenth, I'll be offering empathy to each and every person's story offered for Juneteenth. And I invite you to join me in doing so. Let's not change the channels, delete the stories, or throw up our hands in disbelief. Let's give credit to the stories that we will hear. Now, one of the most harmful results of not offering empathy, and with which Bishop Alvedo painfully shares that she often receives, is the denial of her humanity. Persons are willing to ignore her, denigrate her, swear at her, all because she is a lesbian. Now, personally, when I've been overlooked or denied a role because I am a female pastor, now never in this church or in my denomination, our denomination, the first thing that I always want to shout at the people is you don't even know me. How about giving me a chance before you shut the door in my face. However, this begs the question, where and when do I deny another's humanity? I do it each and every time I balk at offering empathy to another human being, to another beloved child of God. So here's an important teaching that I gained from the bishop, and I quote, Empathy doesn't require us to figure out or understand someone else's life or experiences. Figuring out and understanding always happens through the lens of our own experience. Empathy instead allows us to feel what another is experiencing. It accepts that person in their totality and enables us to then love unconditionally. We don't have to understand. All we have to do is try to feel what another is experiencing or has experienced. To imagine walking a mile in their shoes to offer a cliche. To imagine building a bridge rather than a wall. To imagine extending a hand. So the bishop concludes her chapter on empathy by sharing that empathy helps us to see that my way isn't the only way. So in our next session, we'll look at leaning into ambiguity 
of living through the tension that comes with realized diversity. So I leave you with an invitation to be in prayer with some guidance and an empathy exercise. I invite you to pray every day for someone who is different from you, by name, someone you know. And if you don't know someone different from you, choose a news story focused on people different from you and pray for them. Pray especially on this coming Saturday, June 19th, for our sisters and brothers of color, for an end to systemic racism and to bring about equality for all, and that all does mean all. Now, if you look like me, pray for your heart to be opened to the possibility, even and maybe especially if you don't feel like you're a part of the problem or that this doesn't concern you, that you might just need a change of heart and God's help becoming empathetic and ask for God's help. And this week, if you are in a store or another kind of public space, look at the people around you. Look for those who are different from you and practice offering empathy as you wonder what their story might be and especially how different it might be from yours or your preconceived idea of their story. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to be your beloved children to others, to all of your beloved children. Open our hearts and our minds as we experience your grace and your love to share it and extend it to all people. Help us to fully believe that all means all. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, let's invite everyone to the table so we can share God's love and grace with everyone. Let's continue to stay safe. Let's continue to connect with God and to connect with each other. And let's share God's love with everyone today, tomorrow, and every day. God bless.